Faithful John, once upon a time, there was an old king who was sick, and the king felt that he was going to die soon. So the king asked for his faithful servant to be brought to him. Uh, a servant in old times was somebody who lived in your house and helped you with the cooking and cleaning. Kings had many servants, servants who helped the king with everything. But the king's favorite servant was called Faithful John. He was called Faithful John because he was so faithful. Now, faithful means uh, always helping, always being there, always supporting your friend, never, never letting them down, never doing anything bad to your friend, just always, always helping them. So his most faithful servant, he called Faithful John, because he was so faithful. And the king asked for Faithful John to come to him. And the king said, Faithful John, you are my most faithful servant. The king said, I'm going to die now. It's okay. I'm old. I had a long life. There is only one thing I am worried about my son. After I am dead, he will be the new king, but he is very young and he doesn't yet know the good things to do. He, he doesn't know how to live a good life. You, faithful John, need to teach him and watch him and protect him and make sure he doesn't get into any trouble. And faithful John said, I promise I will be faithful to your son just like I have been faithful to you. And the old king said, faithful John, there's one more thing. After I die, I want you to show my son all around the castle. Show him all the great rooms, all the hallways, all the great treasure. But there is one room he must never see. Do not show him this room. Because in this room, there is a picture of a beautiful princess. And the picture is so beautiful that anyone who looks at it will fall in love with the princess. And then they would do anything to get to her, even put their life in danger. People go crazy because of this picture. So my son must not see the picture. And Faithful John said, I promise I will show him the whole castle but he will never see that picture. And the king said, thank you, faithful John. I trust you. Now I can die in peace. And the king put his head back on the pillow and he died. So he was buried in the ground. Everyone was very sad. But afterwards, faithful John went to his son the new king, the new young king, and faithful John said, I have been faithful to your father, and before he died, I promised I would be faithful to you and always protect you. And the new young king, king said, Thank you, faithful John. And so, Faithful John showed the new young king all around the castle. He showed him upstairs, downstairs, inside, outside, all the great rooms, all the treasures, everything, except for the one room 
where the picture of the princess of the golden roof, that was her name, the princess of the golden roof was hidden. One day, the king and faithful John were walking, and the king said, Faithful John, there's something strange. You have shown me inside every room, but you never open this room for me. You always just walk past this room without opening it. Why do you never show me this room? And faithful John said, I promised your father you must never go in this room. There is something terrible in this room. And the king said, no, no, faithful John, I want to see what is in that room. And faithful John said, no, please, it is too terrible. It would be bad for both you and me. If you go inside, bad things will happen. But the king said, but faithful John, if I don't go inside, then I will always be thinking about it. What's in that room? What's in that room? It'll drive me crazy. I'll think about it at breakfast. I'll think about it at night. I'll always be wondering. He said, I have to go in. And the king tried to open the door, but it was locked. So then the king tried to break the door by force. And faithful John grabbed him and held him back. But the king said, faithful John, I will not leave here until I go into that room. I will stay here forever. And then faithful John realized that there was nothing he could do. The king was determined to see the room. So faithful John was very sad, but he said, okay. And he took out his key and he opened the door. Now, in this room, when you walk in, you open the door and the picture is opposite the door. So as you walk in, you can see the picture directly. And faithful John thought, I am going to stand in front of the king so that he could not see the picture. So they walked in, faithful John stood in front of the king, but the king stood on his tiptoes. Tiptoes is when you stand on your toes like this so that you can see something higher. And by standing on his tiptoes, the king was able to see over the shoulder of faithful John. And the king saw the picture of the princess of the golden roof. And she was so beautiful. And he fell so in love that he dropped to the ground and was unconscious. Now, unconscious means when you are like sleeping. For example, you have maybe a big shock and you fall to the ground with your eyes closed, just like you are sleeping. So faithful John was worried. He picked up the king. He brought him to his bed. He gave him some water, tried to make him comfortable. And at last the king opened his eyes and the king said, faithful John, who was that woman? And faithful John said, she is the princess of the golden roof. And the king said, she was so beautiful. I must have her. And faithful John said, no, it's a bad idea. She's very difficult to get. But the king said, I must. I cannot rest until I get her. The picture is so beautiful that it makes people like this. So, faithful John knew that the king would never have any peace until he met the princess. But the problem was, this princess was difficult to meet. She didn't usually meet people. So, faithful John thought, and he thought, and he thought, and he said at last to the king, the princess of the golden roof loves gold. In her castle, everything is made of gold. 
her cups, her tables, her dishes, her chairs, her plates, everything, everything is gold. Now, Faithful John said, when your father died, he left you five tons of gold. A ton is about 1,000 kilograms. Five tons of gold. Faithful John said, have this gold melted down and then have the goldsmiths make it into beautiful things. Now, in old times, goldsmiths were people who could make things out of gold. You know, it was difficult because they had to melt the gold and then make it into shapes, but some people could do it. So the king got all the goldsmiths in his kingdom and they came to his castle and they melted down all his gold, all five tons. And the goldsmiths worked day and night and day and night for many days and nights. But they made such wonderful things. They made golden birds and golden elephants and golden dragons and golden fish and so many strange and wild animals and strange beasts all out of gold. And at last it was so beautiful. So, faithful John and the king put all these golden things on a ship. Now, a ship is like a big boat. And they went out into the sea and they sailed on the ship for many days until at last they came to the land with the princess of the golden roof. I, uh, and when they got there, faithful John said to the king, okay, you wait on the boat and get everything ready. Uh, get all the golden objects ready to show. I'm just going to take some of these golden objects in my bag and go ahead. And Faithful John got into one of the smaller boats and he rowed it to the shore and he got out and he walked and there was the castle and he walked into the castle and there was a courtyard. Courtyard is like the castle garden. And there was a beautiful girl who was getting water from the castle well with a golden bucket. And when she saw Faith, Faithful John, she turned and she said, who are you? And he said, I am a merchant. Now a merchant is somebody who sells things. They, they buy things cheap and then they sell things more expensive. And he says, I have many wonderful golden things in my bag. And he showed them to the girl. And the girl said, wow, these are beautiful, such beautiful golden objects. And the girl said, ah, you know who would love these? The princess would love these. She loves everything gold. I will take you to her. It turns out this girl was the princess's servant. So she took faithful John by the hand and took him up to the castle and faithful John showed the objects to the princess and the princess says, these are so wonderful, I will buy everything. And faithful John says, actually, I am just the servant. The real merchant is my master and he is back on the ship with so many beautiful gold objects. And the princess said, bring them to me. Bring everything to me. I want to see everything. And Faithful John said, we can't. The problem is there are so many objects on the ship to take everything off would take many days. And even if we had the days, where could we put them? There, there are so many objects, it would take many rooms to put them in and there are not enough rooms in your castle. Now, when the princess heard this, then she really wanted to see the golden objects. She was really curious and she said, please take me to your ship and let me see. 
Now, Faithful John was happy because this was what he wanted all along. So he led the princess back and they went on the small boat and they went to the ship and when they got to the ship, the king, who was disguised as a merchant, said, Ah, my lady, I am a merchant. I have many golden things inside the ship. So he and the princess went downstairs to the bottom of the ship inside where there were so many golden objects and the king showed them to her. Now, while he was showing to them to her, faithful John, who was up on the top of the ship, said, okay, quick. Quick, sail, go into the ocean as fast as you can. And so the crew set the sails and the boat, the ship, went into the sea very quickly. Now the princess was downstairs in the bottom of the ship and she was so interested in all the golden objects that she didn't notice the ship was moving. And in fact, she was down there for many hours looking at one golden object after another. They were so beautiful and so wonderful. And at last, when the princess had seen the last one, she thanked the merchant, the king who was disguised as a merchant, and she went back to the top of the ship. But when she got to the top of the ship, she saw that they were sailing and that they were in the middle of the sea. And the princess said, oh no, I've been tricked. I've been kidnapped by a merchant. And the king came up and he said, it is true, I have tricked you, but I am not really a merchant. I am really a king. And I tricked you only because I was so in love with you. When I saw your picture, I grew so in love with you that I had to do anything to meet you. And when the princess heard this, she felt comforted. She wasn't panicking anymore. And moreover, she thought to herself, he is a handsome king and he loves me so much and she also fell in love with the king and they decided to get married and faithful john and the princess and the king and everybody was happy so the king and the princess were relaxing in the ship and faithful john went around to the front of the ship to play his harp and make music. A uh, harp is a musical instrument. And while Faithful John was making music, three ravens flew towards the ship. Now ravens are black birds and some people believe ravens have magic powers. They can see into the future. And the ravens were talking to each other. Now, Faithful John actually could understand the language of birds. So he could understand what the birds were saying. So Faithful John stopped making music and listened to the birds. The ravens were talking to each other. And the first raven said, Ah, it looks like the king has a princess. And the second raven said, what do you mean it looks like? He really has her. Look, they are sitting together in the boat. But the first raven said, ah, no, I can see the future. I know what will happen in the future. And in the future, when the ship lands, a beautiful horse will come down to meet the king. And the king will want to ride this horse. So the king will get on the horse. But this is a flying horse and the horse will fly into the air and never come down. And so the king 
will never see his princess again. And the second raven said, Oh no, that's terrible. It, is there no hope? And the first raven said, Well, there is a small chance. Because in the horse's saddlebag, uh, a saddle is uh, what you sit on when you ride on a horse. You sit on the saddle and there's a small bag at the front of the saddle. There's a gun. And if someone were to take the gun out of the saddlebag and shoot the horse, the horse would be dead and the king would be saved. But nobody knows this. And if somebody did know this and they told it to the king, they would be turned into stone. And the other raven said, oh, no. And the second raven said, actually, I too can see the future. And it's even worse. Because even if the king doesn't go away on the horse, there is still more danger. When they get to the castle, there will be a beautiful shirt lying on the table. And the shirt looks like it's made of gold and silver, but actually it's made of poison. And if the king puts on the shirt, it will burn him and he will be burned to death. And the third raven said, oh no, it, that's terrible. Is there, is there no hope? Is there nothing to be done? And the ra second raven said, well, if someone puts on gloves, gloves can cover your hand, and picks up the shirt and throws it in the fire, then the shirt will be burned up in the fire and the king will be saved. But, said the second raven, nobody knows this. And even if somebody did know this and they told it to the king, they would be turned into stone. And the third raven said, actually, I too can see the future and it's even worse because even if the king doesn't get burned by the poison shirt, after he gets married, there will be dancing at the wedding and the princess will dance, but she will get sick when she's dancing and she will fall down on the floor. And unless someone kisses her on the mouth, she will die. And the other raven says, oh no, that's terrible. Is there no hope? And the third raven said, well, there is a small hope. If someone kisses the princess, they can save her and she will, she will not die. But nobody knows this. And even if somebody did know this and they told it to the king, they would be turned into stone. And then the ravens flew away. Now, faithful John had understood everything. He could understand what the birds were saying. And he was very sad. And he thought, and he thought, if I say anything to the king about what I know, I will be turned into stone. But if I don't say anything, then bad things will happen to the king. And faithful John thought and thought and thought, and he was very sad. But at last, faithful John said to himself, I promised to always be faithful and to protect the king. And I will do everything I can to protect the king, even if it means losing my life. Losing your life means to die. So, the ship got to the land. And just as the ravens had said, there was a beautiful horse that came down. 
And the king saw this horse and he said, Excellent, what a beautiful horse. This horse will take me home to my castle. But as the king was just about to get on the horse, faithful John pushed the king out of the way. And then faithful John jumped off the, on the horse and faithful John took the gun from the saddlebag and pow, shot the horse right in the head and killed the horse. And everyone was so shocked. They, they couldn't believe it. Now, the other servants hated faithful John because the king loved faithful John the most. And so the other servants were jealous. They, they didn't like that the king loved faithful John the most. So the other servants said, Ah, oh, faithful John, what are you doing? You are a bad servant. That Our king loved this horse. He wanted to ride this horse. But the king said, Leave him alone. Faithful John is my most faithful servant. I don't know why he did that, but I am sure he had a good reason. And then they traveled to the castle. And when they came in the castle, on the table, there was a beautiful shirt. And the king said, ah, this will be the perfect shirt to get married in for my wedding. And the king was just about to pick up the shirt when faithful John pushed the king away and put on some gloves and picked up the shirt and threw it into the fire. And the servants said, faithful John, what are you doing? The king wanted to wear that shirt. But the king said, leave him alone. I'm sure he had a good reason. Faithful John is my most faithful servant. And then they had the wedding. And after the wedding, there was dancing. And the queen was dancing. The, the princess was now the queen. And faithful John was watching her carefully. And while she was dancing, the queen's face turned white. And she fell down. And she was very sick. And faithful John ran and he picked her up and he brought her to a bedroom and an empty room and he kissed her. And the princess, the queen, got better. But the king had seen everything and now the king was angry. And the king said, Faithful John, what are you doing? You are kissing my queen. Why did you do this? Now, Faithful John couldn't tell the king why. Because if he told the king why, he would be turned into stone. So he didn't say anything. And the king got even more angry. And he said, put him in prison. Prison is a room where you are trapped inside. You, you there can't open the door. There are bars. You can't escape. So Faithful John was in prison all night. And in the morning, it was decided that Faithful John would die. So they let Faithful John out. And right before they were going to cut his neck, Faithful John said to the king, Before people die, they are allowed some last words. Last words means to say something. Faithful John said, can I have some last words? And the king said, you may speak. And Faithful John says, I know you think I was a bad servant, but I had a reason for what I did. And Faithful John told him the whole story about how the ravens had come and how he had heard what the ravens had said and how everything he had done was to save the king. And the king said, Oh, faithful John, my dear faithful John, let him free, bring him to me. But it was too late 
Because when faithful John told that story,